Hi, it's the Design Raven, and today I am in Miami Beach at the home of the renowned multidisciplinary artist Myra Lair. She has a lifetime body of work, and the house itself is full of stories. It was built in 1929, and Myra has spent a good portion of her life here, and it's also her home studio. How many years have you been making art? I have been making art for over 65 years. I started when I was a little kid. I continued all the time and then later, you know, I didn't realize I would be a professional artist. I came to that and now I really have a big career and I'm out there and I love it. Art keeps me going forever. The background is a wood piece that I sculpted into a curved shape so it's supposed to resemble a wave. These are special bulbs that stimulate the growth of coral in laboratories. They're called halide bulbs. It's to show the ocean and a way to encourage coral growth because I'm very much into the environment and issues that we're facing with destruction of coral reefs. I love coral and I do them out of threads and ropes and everything. So it signifies a healthy environment when the reefs are blooming and they're full of color and when they bleach out and they turn white, it's a bad sign. The life leaves them and they become white. That's really yeah. sad. It's heartbreaking. Very, very sad, yes. So when you're depicting coral in your work, you are depicting it in a colorful way that it's vibrant and, and still full of life? I Yes. I don't okay. do dead coral. <laughs> no, de no dead coral No here. dead coral. Okay. They call you the mistress of light. How does light play into your body of work? Well, it's two different kinds of light. What I do with fire and fuses and gunpowder, I ignite them and that certainly creates a big flash of light as you're doing it. But the mistress of light came about because my paintings are all, they're light filled. It throws off a beautiful light. We have some footage of you setting canvases on fire, which is brave. <laughs> my neighbors think I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah we it has love to be that. done outside because it creates enormous smoke and fire. So right. I'm out in the yard setting things <laughs> on fire. Right, and your neighbors are saying, they Well, Myra me. must be painting again. They think that crazy old lady, what is she doing? The crazy old lady who sets her canvases on fire. Yeah, and the smoke is enormous, it billows up and down my road. So, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So you're sending out smoke signals. Seems to be. Yeah. So, what does the lighting things aflame? with gunpowder and, and yeah. you, are, do you use blow torches or? Ha blow torches, a cigarette, anything with a fire will okay. ignite it. And then so what, aside from light, what is the visual effect that that adds to the finished work? Well, you know, there's something about being too beautiful. You don't want it to be too beautiful. This light uh, and this um, gunpowder ignition takes the bloom off the rose and it makes it, it gives it an edge, mm -hmm. which today I think you need in your work one right. needs in one's work. This was very difficult to do and took a long time because all of those wave shapes are made of poured resin which then get cut out of a matrix, bent, and I've written on some of them. And then they create those wonderful shadows on the ground of the canvas. When you write on them, what kind of messages are you putting in there? I'm putting on environmental words, species that are extinct, species that are in danger of being ex extinct, mostly messages about the earth. That's gunpowder on the bottom, that dark stuff. Let me get to understanding your technique. So gunpowder explodes, uh -huh. yes? Catches so, on fire. Catches fire. So you sprinkle it mm -hmm. with gunpowder mm -hmm. and then what? Ignite it. 
like you just light it up. Right. And, and then it this goes and whoosh all it the goes way. and then yes. this is what is left behind. Yes. Okay. Are you a pyromaniac? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you never had. <laughs> I love it. Myra, you were featured in the New York Times last year mm -hmm. about your mangrove sculpture. Tell us the significance of those mangrove sculptures that you've done. Mangroves are very wonderful trees that grow in these groups, protect our seashore from erosion, and the roots contain nurseries, encourages the growth of all these wonderful sea life, and protects the shores from hurricanes, from erosion, and so I made whole series of mangroves that you could walk through, you could touch them, you could feel you were enclosed. I call it a sacred space. That's what the New York Times wrote about. What is the mark that you would like, when people think of Myra Lair, your lifetime body of work, what would you like people to associate with you? I'd like to leave a message about protecting the earth, ensuring its future, being aware of climate change, all of the things that are happening that are not good. I'd like people to be aware of the beauty of the Earth. It's our only place in the universe, protecting it for future generations, and understanding through my work how precious the environment is. Well, please keep creating for us. We I'm love you and we love what you do. Thank you. And I hope you'll never stop creating. I'm gonna die in my studio with a brush in my hand if I ever die. <laughs>